Do you hear me now? Yes. Good. Okay. My contribution to this book is very modest because of my ill health. I've not been able to write too much. It comprised many of the statements which I made when I was in prison in 1972 after nine years of incarceration. As you know, I was detained in the third store operation on February 2nd, 1963, and was the last one to come out from that batch of detainees almost 20 years later. Now, this statement mainly stated my stand on my detention. After nine years of incarceration, they wanted me to issue a statement to firstly support the so-called democratic system in Singapore and secondly to renounce politics. I told them that these two demands are contradictory, self-contradictory. Because if there is voluntary democracy, then I don't have to give up politics. So, we, we said we must say something to show repentance. Otherwise, the party will lose face. <laughs> I think it's a question of pride, it's a question of principle. In the first place, the person has to save his face by depriving somebody else of his fundamental rights. Then that's not a face that's worth saving. So, to me, the local rights is a fundamental constitutional right of the people of Singapore. And no one should be deprived of their right and held to ransom to extort statements of repentance and condition. So, the whole thing walked down to having to issue a statement of repentance, which I refused. Subsequently, I was detained for another over 10 years after that statement was issued. So a total of 19 years and 8 months, longer than a life sentence. Life sentence will be released after 13 years after the initial contrary remission. But for no charge, no trial, I was detained for longer than a life sentence. A lot of Malaboru uh, has been said recently on the right of the detainees to appeal to an advisory board. I want to tell you my experience about this advisory board. After about one year of detention, I was asked to go to the prison main gate at about 4 p.m. I was given a notice to say that I had to appear before the advisory board the next day. I was given a full, full step paper of so-called charge sheets. I said, I want to keep this sheet of paper so I prepare for my next morning's appearance. He said, no, we cannot keep it. We just read it and take it. I said, I'm going to call my lawyer about this. He said, no, because I'd like to inform my lawyer because I cannot tell the phone for me now. He said, that is how do I contact my lawyer? He said, that's the law. <laughs> <laughs> so the next morning, I was called to the high court with hand handcuffs and all that. And I appeared before a university board comprising of three persons. A judge called Judge Louis Lowe and two other persons. One is a certain Elias, who I think is a lawyer and another tiny gentleman in his name I cannot remember. So on this so-called charge sheet, there are a lot of blank spaces. I asked Judge Rizzo what does this um, blank spaces mean? He said, oh, these are charges which are so sensitive that they are shown only to the rescue board and not to you. <laughs> I said, what the hell can anybody defend himself against a charge that's not even to do to him? I have asked him by advice. He just said, okay. I said, is this a mockery or a judgment or what? He said, this is the law. Okay. I said, the whole thing is a judicial class. I mean, it's incredible that anyone has to face this kind of mockery, this kind of so-called justice. And the fact that a high court judge is being put as a chairman of this advisory board gives the public an illusion that there is judgment, there is justice. And I told him that if I were a high court judge, I will not lend credence to this mockery by my presence. Then this Elias threatened me with contempt of court. I was very happy when he threatened me with contempt of court because after all I was very interested in transferring for all the things I wanted. By the way, in my 20 years in prison, I was staying in 
practically all the prisons in Singapore, except of course the female prison. <laughs> and then the judge says, no, no, let the doctor have to stay. There's no question of contact with court. So I gave a three hour statement to, to debunk all the so called judges. One of the charges was in fact a false judge. was charged for being one of the eight father students who were charged for this, this uh, sedition. And so as a matter of fact, I didn't have the privilege to be one of the eight. In fact, I would feel better to be one of the eight. And then I was not one of the eight. And so so why should I be given for allegedly to be one of the eight when these eight were acquitted without being caught and acquitted and defended by Lee Kuan Yew himself who is now detaining me. And they missed the law. Everything is the law. So recently we have heard all this so-called rule of law. Now there is a detention without trial at the ISA, a law which makes a mockery of the concept of rule of law. The rule is a law that is outside the rule of law. Once you are detained under the ISA, you have no legal defense whatsoever. I tried the habeas corpus twice. On one occasion, I succeeded for a technical error on the side of the government. They did not sign my detention order. It was supposed to be signed by a minister, but it was dedicated to a civil servant. So, on that account, the court has to release me on a technical, technical point. So when I was released, there were the special ones waiting for me outside the police camp I was re-arrested one minute later. It's a mock release. And for that heaviest corpus, I was punished by being sent to the most hideous of all detention centers, the Central Police Station headquarters. That was a place that is not fit to keep human beings, or with animals, let alone human beings. And the place was so dark, so stingy, and so ill ventilated that you cannot stand inside for more than 24 hours. But I was popped in there for 24 hours a day. And the whole place was infested with bugs. I had a lot of bugs for company. There was no reading material. The lights were so dim that I could hardly see the crease on my hand. So immediately the five of us were there, went on hunger strike. 